You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today we have <coughs> special candidates edition for Greater Brockton. We've switched from promoting the nonprofits to allowing the candidates from mayor, city council at large, city council and school committee to promote themselves. And we have with us today a familiar face to Brockton and TV, Bill Carpenter. Welcome, Mark. Mayor. Hey, well, thank How you very you? much for having me. Well, thanks for being on. I know you're busy. You've got to be yeah. the mayor at the same time that you're running for re-election to stay the mayor. And, and, and that is a challenge. Uh, but I will say, as someone who has been both the challenger and the incumbent in a mayoral election, I prefer the incumbent. Oh, I'll live with the wearing two hats. <laughs> so third time could be a charm here yep. in Brockton. The yep. last two mayors have only served for two terms, OK? And, I, and you're absolutely right. But I think, you know, you've been around this a long time, Mark. I think every campaign has its own dynamics that, that pass. I don't think any two campaigns are ever identical, even if you have the same candidates. Um, so. Your point is well taken. It, it seems like it was tougher to win a third one than a second one uh, for the last couple of administrations. But I guess my answer would be Jack Units won five in a row without ever getting beat. Right. So exactly. uh, I, I think every election, every campaign uh, is unique. And uh, I think this campaign for me is much different than the first two. So, But you're still out there. We were talking before we started recording that the last weekend alone, you were out actually yeah. knocking on doors, yeah. placing your own signs. Yeah. In the rain. In the yeah. rain. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Well, I, I do know the rain beats the 100 degree heat, I can tell you that. Um, yeah, you know, I, I guess part of it is I like campaigning. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that part of it, getting out. I, I, I think that it's important for me to be out still walking neighborhoods just like I was four years ago. Um, I, I think it's how I find out what is truly important to the residents of the city, what their concerns are, what their issues are. I, I think that's, uh, that's the best way for me to realize what's important to the residents of the city, is to be out there uh, knocking on doors and asking for votes. And, you know, as much as, you know, today, Mark, we have social media and everybody's all over social media and internet, et cetera. I think Mayor Abrocht, and even though we're a pretty big city nowadays, it's still small enough that I think the basics haven't changed. I don't think anything beats walking up someone's driveway and asking for their vote. I just don't think there's anything more important than that. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. And when I ran, that was the best part. Not to mention I lost about 15 pounds when yeah, I was walking well, yeah. up all these driveways <laughs> in Easton and Brockton. But you're out there a lot, Mayor, okay? When there's a crisis or a tragedy, I remember a Sunday morning, I got a call here. There was a, a, mm -hmm. a fatality right mm -hmm. on the doorstep of BCA. I got the call from you personally, 9 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, after you had probably already been here for an hour yeah. or two yeah. with all the police tape. Yeah. One of your good friends who's come out when, when Chief Hayden was here, yeah. Raymond Flynn, the former mayor yeah. of Boston, he was a neighborhood mayor. I would say that you fit in that role, too, because you are all over Brockton. So I, you I, were before you were ever mayor or before you were ever school committee. But I, I do think that I think every mayor has their own style and, and the way they like to work. And you're right. Uh, you know, I, I had the great good fortune to have Ray Flynn as one of my advisors during my initial campaign. And I can't tell you how many long conversations I had with him, and particularly after we won the first election, in preparing to take take the seat of mayor. And, and you know, the, the ambassador was a great neighborhood mayor, and he was out there. And I learned a lot of that from him. And also the other uh, mayor that I took, that I take that from is Rudy Giuliani. And uh, I, I've read a lot of books by a lot of different mayors to, to gain perspective and experience. And Rudy Giuliani, in, in his book, talked quite a bit about that even as the ch chief executive officer of a city like New York, one of the biggest cities in the world, that the mayor's got to get out and see things with his own two eyes, hear it with his own ears. Because when you're making those critical budget decisions or hiring decisions, you can't be making those decisions based upon what someone told you about something. Mm -hmm. You've got to be out there. So I, mean, I think it's important to the residents that they see me out there that whether it's something positive or negative, that I care, that I'm out there, that I'm aware of it, and that I'm available to talk to the residents in the neighborhood that may have been impacted. 
Um, and I think it's also been important with my relationship with our first responders. I think if you would ask a police officer, a firefighter, an EMT who's been around for a while, uh, they would tell you that they've seen me a lot more uh, than they've ever seen a mayor before. And they're, they're kind of used to it now, they used, but they did used to remark about it quite a bit. But I think it's helped me to gain a great appreciation for what our firefighters and police officers are out there doing every day. That as much as you say, well, I support the police or I support the fire, until you've sat where I sit and you get out and get to, to some of these scenes, um, and then truly come to appreciate uh, what these officers and firefighters do day in and day out, and then have to go home and, and, and try to resume a normal family life. And uh, I, I've, I've, I've developed a much greater appreciation for our first responders by seeing them in action so many times. Now, you've put a lot of priority on public safety. You talked public safety right from the beginning when Absolutely. you ran your first term for mayor, and you've delivered. Okay, you, you, we have more police officers and we have more police officers that are diverse. Yep, and I, I, I think, uh, you know, when I look over the past three and a half years, I, I think we've done a pretty good job of implementing the game plan that we put in front of everyone four years ago. And I said that over a 10 year period, we needed to increase the force by 50 officers. And we're ahead of pace to do that. The day I took office, we had 174. Uh, with the class going into the academy next month, we'll be at 200. Uh, we're ahead of the pace that I set for ourselves. We do need more boots on the ground. We are undermanned. But you know, with policing also, we've invested in technology, uh, video surveillance cameras, shot spotter. We created the city police department's first crime analyst. Uh, when I started comparing Brockton to other police departments of cities uh, our size, everyone had crime analysts except us. So now our officers uh, have current, important, up-to-the-minute data when they go out into, the, out into the city every day and night. And I think our police chief and our command staff are now able to make decisions in terms of how they deploy our assets based upon actual data, not conjecture. So I, I think that as long as, I, I think public safety will always be the number one issue in Brockton. Um, Clean and safe neighborhoods is something I talk about all the time. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do. I'll be the first one to say it, but I do believe we've made progress. I believe the city is cleaner today than it was three and a half years ago, and I know the city is safer today than it was three and a half years ago because we have the statistics to prove it. Gun-related violence is down over 30% uh, from what it was the year before I became mayor, and I think that's the best barometer. Uh, we face the same challenges that all cities across this country face uh, with uh, violent crime and drug addiction and homelessness. And I think in our administration, we haven't been afraid to take those challenges head on and speak openly about it and talk about what we can do to improve. Now, what are you hearing when you're out placing those signs? You talked about the concerns and issues of the residents of Brockton. So when you're placing the sign, I'm sure people are yeah. not missing an opportunity no. to tell you. Right good and bad, yep. what the concerns and what the issues are. So there's are. always some of the neighborhood issues, and I like those because we're able to respond to those. You know, we, we installed C-Click Fix, and for people that haven't used it yet, it's a free app that you can put on your phone and you can report almost any type of issue to the city 24 hours a day, seven days a week, get a confirmation, get an email follow-up. We respond to those within 48 hours. So I hear about some of those, but I think clearly, um, I think that People worry about uh, public safety crime. Uh, they worry about the city's economy, uh, jobs, uh, which really is building business, and we've made great strides in that area. Uh, I think education is important to families with children, and certainly we're struggling to fight for every education dollar we can get from the Commonwealth right now. Uh, but again, I think, I, I think we have a great school system despite the challenges, and I think our school system fulfills the promises we make to every family in the city, and that's that their children receive the best public school education in the world. Now, since this is not official mayor show and it's can candidate yeah. Carpenter, yeah. they just told me I had about five minutes, okay. probably four. I want to make sure you have two at the end, two website, phone number, how yeah. to contact you, get involved. That's okay. but, um, Most people know where to find me nowadays. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. So um, 
I asked one of your challengers who made a comment during the house party yeah. issue yeah. about blood on your hands. I just yeah. point blank came out and asked him. Yeah. So I'll ask you the same question. How did you respond when you heard that quote from your challenger? Uh, I didn't because I don't think it deserved a response. Um, uh, but I will tell you that um, uh, the events on Myrtle Street that day and night, uh, that we've taken it as a learning experience. I've, I've submitted uh, a very detailed ordinance uh, change to the city council uh, mm -hmm. that will completely revamp the permitting of special events. A lot of misinformation. We permitted a special event until 9 p.m. The shooting that occurred in that neighborhood occurred at 12.03 a.m., more than three hours after the permitted event had expired. Uh, I think it's a long reach to say that because we allowed a block party at six in the evening had to do with someone being shot at midnight. Mm -hmm. Having said that, though, it speaks to the larger issue of house parties, which are a big problem in the city every weekend in the warm weather months. And uh, we've established the Quality of Life Task Force. We're identifying repeat offending houses, bringing resources there, responding to the complaints of neighbors. And every Thursday morning, every city department that can in any way impact the quality of life of a neighborhood sits with me. I chair it personally. I go through each issue with them. And uh, we're having some great success. And that Quality of Life Task Force really was an offshoot of uh, the events on Myrtle Street that afternoon and evening where we realized we need a more cohesive way to respond with all city agencies when there's an issue in a neighborhood. Two quick issues. I got the three-minute queue. Yeah, that's so okay. And I, the one thing I'll say about that event is that the, the event that we permitted was a block party. It turned out not to be a block party. Okay. A block party is when all the residents in a particular neighborhood get together and use some public space sometimes out in the street. Uh, this event, it turned out the neighbors weren't even invited. It wasn't a block party. It was The event was misrepresented to us. Um, but I think out of uh, any time something goes wrong, there's an opportunity to debrief, learn from it, and prevent it from happening again. I think we've made some significant changes that will prevent it from happening again. Two quick issues in the remaining time. Desal, which is going before the council, yep. okay, and lawsuit with the city and education. I don't know how to get that all done in two yeah, minutes, yeah, well, but you, you, you can probably do it. Uh, we've been talking about Aquaria for a while now. Uh, in a nutshell, the city is locked into a contract that even the council last year came to the same conclusion that the city is bound by the Aquaria contract, which means that over the next eight years, we're going to pay Aquaria $100 million. Uh, I think that we can do, get much more for $100 million by buying and owning the plant and controlling it uh, with the $100 million that we're going to give them anyway. That's the real short version. Okay. Um, the, the other education, one, I don't know if we're going to get to. They gave me the minute, so how about 30 right. seconds? All right. Well, education is uh, clearly the way the Chapter 70 formula is being implemented by the state over the last few, few years. Uh, gateway cities like Brockton are not being reimbursed fairly for education. Um, and I think that uh, the only way we're going to rectify it is by taking the state to court. Okay. Well, you and I could talk for two hours yeah. if we had the chance. Um, do you want to real quick just say one well, thing uh, on your behalf? Just, I, I, I ask everyone once again in this campaign uh, for your vote. I think that we've accomplished a lot in our first three and a half years, but I think we are just getting started. We still have a lot of work to do. And uh, I ask the voters for the opportunity to continue to work for you. And I ask for your vote on September 19th. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And the quick wrap is you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more election coverage on BCA channels 9, 12, and 98. But most of all, go out on the preliminary and vote. Thank you.